Today, happy 2019. <laughs> Last episode, I said that panels are the most fundamental unit of comics, and I've started this week and this year by saying it again, so you know that I mean it. Now, they're not the raw elements of comics. That's the visual rhetoric stuff that I've talked about. No, this is more like, well, if comics are books, then panels are words. Now, words can be grouped together into bigger units and broken down into letters, but words are that basic unit that everything gets built from. Now, there's a very important element of visual design that help us make sense of words. You see, this is really hard to understand, but this, ah, there you go. So today, we're going to talk about the space between panels, which is called the gutter. I'm Andrea Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. Now, the primary function of the space between words is an organizational one. It can also help with context. The gutter does these things, for sure. But if you remember from our last episode, the borders of panels aren't always clear. Sometimes they're implied. A small space between those images helps the reader understand that it's not an open space in one image, but two images. But the gutter, like panels, is pretty flexible. For example, in this strip, there's no space between these panels. They're bumped up right next to each other like good buddies. That doesn't mean there's no gutter. Just like you can have an implied panel border, you can have an implied gutter. We know there's a separation between these two images because the panel border makes it clear. It doesn't require a physical separation of space. So, if the point of the gutter is just to tell panels apart, then there wouldn't be any purpose to talking about an implied gutter. So, regardless of what the point of a gutter was originally, or what it has become, the reality of the gutter, implied or not, is that it's as important as the panels it binds. But I'll let you sit with that for a moment, because if the panel is the fundamental building block of comics, and I'm telling you the space between panels, which sometimes isn't even an actual space, is as important as the panel itself, what the heck am I talking about? Well, it comes down to one of the most fascinating things about how comics as a form is constructed and how it forces creators and readers into a peculiar game of push and pull. You see, way back in episode 23, well, 10 episodes ago now, I talked about the act of interpretation and how it is a complicated exchange between the artist and the audience. An artist says something. The audience receives that message. And those two messages might not be the same, but that doesn't make either message, what the artist meant to say and what the audience gets from the piece, correct. Both messages are meanings derived from and possible to take from the piece. And both are, well, among the many possible meanings of a work of art. The point is that any work of art is capable of producing an almost infinite number of meanings, depending on who's making it, who's consuming it, when, where, etc. Art isn't a sermon or a lecture, it's a conversation, an exchange. The gutter is, in many ways, a literal depiction of this exchange. You see, a comic artist gives you two moments, and the gutter is the space in which the artist has to let go and let you connect them. Now, while all art is an exchange between artist and audience, few forms make this exchange so, well, visible. Now, comic creators can make it so that it's pretty straightforward for you to imagine what happens between two panels. I mean, it's possible Cap ran around the block and made a phone call in between these fighting moves with that rock leaper. But it's more likely there's a brief moment in between these two moves and it's the same fight. A few seconds have passed. This becomes more obvious in the context of the whole page. Again, since no one can stop you from your sincere belief that hours pass between each punch or that they all happen in completely different cities, in fact, there's no background to tell us differently. However, most of us are probably going to interpret this as a single fight taking place over a few minutes in the same location. And Kirby trusts us to follow him on this journey, and his skill with panel composition and body language help our eyes bounce along and across the different rows affecting our sense of space and place with it. But sometimes comic artists want to imply ambiguity. The gutter allows them to do that, to leave it in our hands and in our heads. Maybe the most famous example comes from Scott McCloud when he does this in Understanding Comics, 
to show just what a rich and strange productive place the gutter is when he leaves the murder up to us. So one of the things that's always a little funny to me about comics is that they're often thought of as easy to read. And that's, I think, largely because of the combination of words and pictures which we associate with kids' books. It seems to mean that it's easier for readers who might not understand all of the vocabulary on a page or be able to pronounce all of the words to follow what's going on in a narrative. Or that perhaps, because of the images, it's easier to visualize the prose or the story. Um, and I've heard from a lot of well-meaning parents something along the lines of, my kid loves comics, but I want them to read more, you know, real books. And look, on the one hand, I get what they're saying. On the other hand, what a limited understanding of what makes up the practice of reading. Because reading is so much more than being able to summon up what a proscenium is when you see that weird word on a page. When people talk about what makes reading exciting and engaging, it's always about how we interact with stories, right? How we get sucked into them and how we inhabit a certain world. And if we're talking about reading for the purposes of like learning, then it's about being able to make sense of an idea in your own terms and how to apply it to your own context. And both of these ways of reading require ownership, personal involvement with the text, whether it's a fun narrative or a big idea like math or philosophy or history or something. So I'm not pretending that having a good vocabulary won't help you with some of these things, or that understanding words isn't important, or heck, that reading prose is a waste of time. But comics, it turns out, is a deeply involved form of reading, and the gutter is at the heart of that. It forces readers to be actively, visibly involved in the process of interpretation and creation in between every panel. It doesn't matter if that interpretation is sometimes straightforward, that's true of prose as well. The point is that readers of comics are constantly confronted with their own involvement in the reading process via the gutter. Pictures are great, and they are useful in helping learning readers. Plenty of studies show that. It also doesn't hurt that a lot of comics are published in popular genres. But I'd wager that one of the things that actually makes comics compelling to people, and easy to read, isn't that they're simple, but that they're yours. I don't, I don't think most comics readers would articulate formal ownership in quite the way that I have here, but when it comes to comics, there's no better place to be than in the gutter. Next episode, we'll continue our tenure as gutter snipes, but focus a little bit more on time. See you then.